Team Trinity, Team Losi, and Novak Electronics, who are the sponsors, present the 1997 IFMAR two-wheel and four-wheel drive off-road worlds. Just east of Los Angeles, California, in the city of Pomona, was the site of the 1997 off-road worlds. It was hosted by the world-famous Ranch Pit Shop. The mornings were usually overcast and the sun appeared around noon. Accommodations at the ranch were excellent. Racers and spectators were provided with plenty of shade and refreshments. The ranch pit shop has been in existence since 1978. It started as an asphalt on-road track. As the years went by, it was eventually filled in with dirt and became a major off-road facility. 150 of the world's top drivers participated in this eight-day event. However, many of these drivers were here way before the start of the Worlds, making sure they had plenty of practice time. Two-wheel drive was scheduled to be the first event and four-wheel drive second. The drivers that participated came from 17 countries, from Europe, Asia, Africa, United States, Australia, just to name a few. The uh, participants for this race come from the three main blocks of uh, IFMA, that's the European Federation, EFRA, the American Federation RAW and the Far East Federation FEMCA and they enter through their Federation blocks based on their qualifications in their home countries. So we have 150 people entered for this event from some 17 countries throughout the world. And they come here to race to find the world champion, the IFMAR world champion for electric off-road. Your team from South Africa. There we have Team Hong Kong. And our participants from Belgium. Track side, all the way from Ireland. And our lone participant from Norway. from Denmark and our team from Japan. The opening day ceremonies introduced all of the countries that are participating in this event. The driver teams paraded around with banners of their country. These events bring drivers from all around the world together in renewing old friendships and making new ones. There is certainly a camaraderie between these world-class drivers. Uh, I know that this is about racing and about business. But it's also about making friends. So I just want to welcome everybody and good luck. Monday, August 11th, began with the final round of controlled practice. Each driver ran one practice round against the same nine cars that would be in their qualifying heats. Qualifying began at about 11 a.m. IFMAR starts were used for qualifying. This is a stagger start where each driver would start when their car number was called and they would be on their own clock. This allows the drivers to make clean runs of qualifying because they are staggered away from each other.
Yeah. So. This is race number 14 on the course. Race number 15 is in standby. Ryan Kimball, Mark Davidis, Matt Mitchell, Neil Kraft, Richard Mary, Meredith, Richard Barton, Richard Taylor, Carl Marsland, Alex Guerrero, and Todd Hodge. <laughs> Under sunny skies, four rounds of qualifying with 15 heats per round were run. The track blue grooved early, making the lap times quick and consistent throughout the last three rounds. Greg Hodap was the first to turn a 13-lap run. He repeated that time once more before the end of the day and was consistently the fastest driver overall. Listen. 20 seconds on the race clock, drivers, less than 20 on the race clock. How does that time? 24.96. That is a 13 out pace. As was the case for Matt Francis in round number uh, three. All drivers continue ready until I call you off. Hold up, is on lap number 13, the new top qualifier has a number two working for his final lap. Masami Hirasaka, exactly two seconds behind Hodap. So that's going to give Masami Hirasaka a very fast 12 lap run in race number 14, round number four. So Hodap showing that he can go 13 laps, one minute, 13 minute. laps, 524 for Greg Hodap. Scott Brown, Brian Kinwald, Matt Francis, and Masami Hirosaka also boasted 13 lap runs. After getting off to a slow start, Brian Kinwald turned the fastest individual time of the day, 13 laps in 5 minutes 23 seconds. At the end of four rounds, Greg Hodap was the current TQ, followed by Masami Hirosaka and Brian Kinwald. One more qualifying round remains to be run in the morning for a total of five qualifying rounds. Once the five rounds are completed, each driver's best three-point scores will be totaled to determine the overall qualifying order. Twenty-four point eight three. The average lap time for the number one car. Mark Ravidis has dropped down to the third spot. Everybody, continue ready. I'll call you off. And number one is working on lap number thirteen. Is going to come down to this last lap to see if he takes over the TQ spot. Uh, spot. Said by Greg Hudap in the previous race. So Kim, while working on his final lap, this is going to be his first 13 lap run in qualifying today. So let's take out the time of Kim while he comes around with a time of 13 lap 523 for an ETQ spot for Brian Kim while the last heat of the day and Kim while takes a TQ spot. And as I was told by Ryan Nelson, that is going to be a Brian Kim while TQ spot for the day. We'll have to take the print out. The 1997 World's Track was designed specifically for this event by Gil Losey, Jr. Well, when we, when we set out to do this track, we knew it could potentially be 110 degrees out here, which is really hard on motors and batteries. So we tried to do something that was not going to be too hard on the motors and batteries, but yet be challenging and, um, you know, and technical both for the, for the drivers and the, the sponsors, you know, the motor and battery guys. But um, if you look at the track, I tried to have a lot of on-power, off-power sweepers, on-power and off-power hairpins, jump sections that weren't hard to survive, but hard to do right to go fast. So you definitely saw the skill level of the drivers. And tried to make a track that was patient, that did have some passing zones with you know, double lefts and double rights where you could set up a guy in, make passes. And you know, hopefully we accomplished that. And, you know, we've been working really hard on trying to get a surface that we could leave dry for an entire week and um, you know, stay together, which is it's difficult in the 110 degree weather that we have in the summertime. But um, so far we're getting it to hold up pretty good. A lot of people put in a lot of hours and working the dirt, packing it in. We've used um, something called calcium chloride in the surface of it. 
help the water get in and dry out consistently so it stays you know, in bigger chunks so it doesn't fall apart as bad.